early in my priesthood, somebody told me that the first five years of the priesthood is the most critical one. Uh, they say that in the first five years, a lot of priests would leave. And for me, I was in, uh, as, a, as an associate pastor at St. Timothy uh, Parish in Toronto, and I was, I was like really enjoying it. I said, no, yeah, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go like smooth sailing you know, in, in my priesthood. So after my two years of, of being an associate in, uh, uh, in, in Toronto, I was asked to be an administrator in a parish in Halifax, Nova Scotia. And things started well there, but after a year, uh, there was some issue within the parish, and because I'm the administrator, I had to make some tough decision that you know, is in line with the decision of the archbishop, but not very popular to the people. And because of that, I, I, it started to affect me. You know, when, when I was getting pushback uh, from people, I started not sleeping well. And because I'm not sleeping well, uh, I started to experience anxiety and depression. And this went on for several months, I think even more than a year, okay, until it really affected my work, you know, and, and my decision-making, all those things. And uh, that's why... December of 2018, I, I had to, to, to talk to my general superior and tell that, you know, I need to go on a medical leave. So a week before Christmas, I had to leave my parish and tell them that I'm going to be going on a medical leave. And that was one of the most painful um, time in my life, you know, it, because I know I won't be able to celebrate Christmas with my parishioners. And they're my children. You know, for, uh, I'm sure for those parents who couldn't celebrate uh, a Christmas with their children, you know the pain. So I came here to Ottawa, January uh, 2019. And I, I came here to, 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 to St. Mary's. Uh, I remember coming here on January 6. And when I came here, I met my friend here. And, and the Lord reminded my friend, uh, because she has this gift of prophecy, of the prophecy that was given to her for me a year ago. That was in January 2018. And what was the prophecy? The prophecy was that she was driving, uh, going to work, and then she saw a red and white flag, a red and white boat, and a red and white road. Okay, And she saw a stop sign, and wrapped around the stop sign is the Ottawa Sense, which is the hockey team here in Ottawa, the scarf of Ottawa sense. And so she, she gave that prophecy to me, she said, for your discernment. And for me, it didn't make any sense. Okay? All I know, red and white, or oh, maybe it's the divine mercy, right? Uh, divine mercy image. So, um, and when my friend saw me, January 2019, the Lord told her, uh, told her that, that prophecy is going to come into fruition. I think what's happening there is that, you know, as she was driving, going to work, she saw a stop sign. It means that I'm going to stop from my ministry. Stop from my ministry. And the Ottawa sense uh, scarf, uh, of course, it's Ottawa. Scarf is winter. That was the, 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 the height of the winter. And the red and white is the divine mercy. I will experience divine mercy, the healing through the divine mercy of Jesus here in Ottawa. So, and then January, I had to go to a treatment center uh, north of Toronto. I was there for four months, okay? And I was really in bad shape going there. Uh, I, I, was, I was diagnosed with clinical depression. I was uh, diagnosed with severe anxiety. Um, I wasn't sleeping well. Uh, maybe I would only sleep like maybe one hour or no sleep at all. And I was having suicidal thoughts. You know, I, I had a plan. I had a plan, and um, by God's grace, I didn't do it. You know, I thought of all the people that I love. Uh, I didn't do it. it. It was by grace. And also in the treatment center there, I was start, starting to have doubts. Doubts about my priesthood. You know, whether God really called me to become a priest. Maybe I just forced myself into it. So I, I already also had a plan to leave. I was planning to leave the priesthood, okay? And, uh, you know, I, I've been talking to, to my brother priest, my spiritual director, 
and they've been telling me, go back, go back to my discernment, right? And I remember Mary was very instrumental in my, in my, in my calling to the priesthood and also in joining the Companions of the Cross. I remember when I was working in China from 2002 to 2007, that's where I started the, the sense, the calling to the priesthood. And I told Mary, Mary, if, if you're really calling me to the priesthood, give me a sign. You know, and, uh, and, and if you're really calling me to the priesthood and to this community, I want to join on August 15, the Solemnity of the Assumption of Mary. That's why I came here to, to Ottawa um, in, in Canada on March 25, 2008, on the Solemnity of the Annunciation. Um, came, came to Ottawa uh, in, in April to do a come and see. Uh, at that time, Father Mark Goring was the vocation director. And, uh, and you know, with, with all the interviews and the psychological tests, everything went well. And I got a call after a few weeks, and they asked me to join the community on August 15, 2008. Okay. Six years after that, uh, on August 15, 2014, I made my permanent promises to the Companions of the Cross. Okay. So August 15 was a clear sign that uh, Mary was calling me to be a priest and, and here uh, also to join the Companions of the Cross. So it was really tough. Um, you know, uh, but I'm glad you know, I, I persevered. You know, I didn't leave. And uh, so I, I left the, 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 the treatment center at end of April, and they were just so afraid. I was still in bad shape. They thought that after a few weeks or a few months, I would go back there again in the treatment center. Uh, so I came here May um, in Ottawa, and the reason why I didn't fully recover in the treatment center is because of the prophecy that it is in Ottawa that I will experience healing through the divine mercy of Jesus. Okay, and uh, so uh, July 1st, uh, so May, I was waiting for my assignment here at St. Mary's. July 1st, I was still not well. I remember uh, I was still not well. I remember uh, when I would preach, I had to type out my homily and read it word by word because I was so afraid that I will forget uh, my, my, my homily, okay? And, and uh, so during that time, it's like I was like on a wheelchair with regards to, to my preaching. And of course, I, I, I've been going to uh, a psychologist on a monthly basis, uh, attending healing and recovery groups here in Ottawa, and I started to get better, but it was gradual, okay? Come September, the Lord told me, yes, you could type it out, your homily, but don't read it. Just preach from the outline. So that's what I did uh, in September. So it's like letting go of the wheelchair and then just walking with crutches. Now, come January, I started to get better again. January, the Lord told me, you don't need to type it out. Just prepare your homily through an outline and then preach. So that's what I did. Uh, it is hard, you know, uh, it's like letting go of the crutches, and I started walking. Come March, the Lord told me, you don't even need to make an outline. Okay? Just, just, you know, I will give you what you need to preach, and then preach from there. And it's like, it's like the Lord is asking me, you know, just, just run. Run. And that's what I've been doing since March. I, I've just been running. Okay? And now, I, I'm still a, a big work in progress with regards to, to preaching and, uh, but, but I've seen, you know, how the Lord really healed me. And, uh, and, and uh, I experienced this uh, complete healing in January of this year. Okay? And, uh, and, and I was like thinking it was like a miracle, really. I consider it as a miracle. And I was like thinking, who is, who is really behind all this? I remember going to a, a conference in Michigan uh, I attended a school of the prophetic there. Um, and people who go there, they, they really want to practice this gift of prophecy. So when I was there, there was this lady who prophesied to me and said, he, she sensed that, you know, that she saw an image of me crossing a bridge. And automatically, I thought of Mary as that bridge. Okay, why? Okay, 
before the end of uh, the year, before, before the year ends of, uh, of year 2019, there was a parishioner here in, in St. Mary's who was inspired to give me uh, the rosary that was blessed by Pope John Paul II in 1983. Okay, so what's the, the significance of 1983? 1983 is the 950th anniversary of Christ redeeming the world through the cross. Okay, and she said she, it was very hard for her to give me that rosary, but she needed to be obedient. Okay, so she gave me that rosary, and it's a, it's, it's a beautiful rosary. Uh, so I think it's this one, you know. So I, I always carry it with me. And, uh, and another, another thing is that um, on January, uh, on somebody gave me a, uh, a link uh, to the website, uh, and that website is that where, wherein you pick a saint, okay, for the year. And, and for me, okay, I, I pressed that, that, that link there, that button, and the link, that, that the saint that I got was Mary, Mother of God, January 1st. And I remember January 1st, I was celebrating here, Father Mark uh, was the one uh, celebrating and preaching. That Mass was offered to me on January 1st, okay? So that's why when, when the lady, that person said that she saw me crossing a bridge, that bridge is Mary. January 1st is the bridge from 2019 to 2020 because it's in January where I experienced uh, total healing. No anxiety, no depression, no suicidal thoughts, okay? I, I, and I, I've been sleeping well. And Another prophecy that was uh, given to me was that this, uh, this person saw uh, a lady in blue playing piano, okay? And she, this person saw me singing. And the interpretation of that is that Mary is playing the piano and I just kept on singing. And that's what I experienced really since this January. It's like there's something inside me in my soul that kept on singing. You know, I've been praising the Lord, doing like that. Another prophecy that was given to me uh, was that um, this person saw a lady holding my hand and we were just running. Running, running in the field. And my interpretation of that was that Mary was holding my hand, is holding my hand, and we just kept on running. So be- beautiful, beautiful uh, prophetic uh, message given to me. During, uh, during that time. And, uh, and uh, looking back, like, you know, why did the Lord permit that to happen to me? I think the Lord permitted that to happen to me so that I will be purified. I need to be purified. Purified from what? Purified from self-will, self-love, self-reliance. I was so full of myself, I needed to die to myself. And the Lord allowed that to happen uh, so that I will be purified. And also for, for, for me to have great compassion to those who are struggling, you know, with mental illness, anxiety, depression, uh, insomnia, suicidal thoughts, to have great compassion for them and, and really to give them a message of hope, you know, not, not to get discouraged, not to give up. So, um, so yeah, the, if, the Lord, if the Lord didn't heal me through the, the, the intercession of Mary, I don't know if I'll be able to go to this YouTube ministry, <laughs> really, you know. And, and I, I really thought that, you know, this YouTube ministry is only for, for, for people like Father Mark Goring, who's gifted and who has so, many to, so much to offer, uh, you know. But the Lord uh, called me to, to be in this ministry uh, last, uh, uh, last March, you know, when I was doing my retreat in... in uh, in, in Cumbermere, Ontario, and uh, that's why I started to, uh, I launched this YouTube ministry on Easter Sunday on April 12th. So I really want to thank Mary, you know, for, for her prayers, and also for those people who really did, I was ready to give up on myself. But I would like to thank my family, my friends, my companion brother and priests, uh, my parishioners who did not give up on me, who, 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 who believed in me, all the way. And I, I really would like to thank them. Now, I would like to share with you uh, from Insinu Yesu. Uh, I, I really encourage you to, 
to read this book. And in this, uh, in this book, I would just like to share with you what Jesus shared to this Benedictine monk. Okay? Uh, Jesus said, If only my mother's role and the greatness of her work, even now from her place in heaven, were better known, then there will be a great sp- springtime of holiness in my church, and first of all, among my priests. For I have entrusted each one of them to her, as to the most attentive and compassionate of mothers. All the resources of her immaculate heart, full of grace, are at service of her motherhood, of the souls of my priests. Priests have the right and the privilege of calling upon my mother in every need, trial, failure, and sin, confident of receiving from her help and solace, mercy and healing, comfort and peace. In a word, this relationship with my most pure mother is the secret of priestly holiness. My priests have only to seek Mary, my mother, and all the rest will be given them in abundance. Beautiful, beautiful message of Jesus to all of us about the role of Mary. You know, that, that, that's why for me, you know, I'm not ashamed and I'm proud to be called Mama's boy. You know, and I devote as the, my, my whole life, as long as I live, to the promotion of, of her devotion. Devotion to our Blessed Virgin Mary. So to our Blessed Virgin Mary, my Queen, my Mother, my love. I thank you for everything.